Welcome to another round of Salty Takeaways and Bitter Ends, although I don't know how much salt there will be or how bitter it will be after the 4-0 win for Atlanta United over FC Cincinnati. John here, Nick there. So, Nick, what did I miss? Nothing. So, that's the show for this week. Here we go. That's, but... good. that's the show right there. Look, they won 4-0 against a team that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's your in-depth analysis for the evening. You're supposed to beat these teams like this. And not everybody gets the job done. But tonight, Atlanta showed up in the same form that they had uh, against Orlando. And they, uh, they, they, they took Cincinnati. They took the Skyline Chili Plate. And they shoved it in their face. And they said, you and your, your chili pasta can get out of here because it's crap. We don't like it. Nobody likes it. It's, a, it's, a, it's not even a regional thing. It's a, it's a hyper-local uh, city thing that you've turned into a national brand for some ungodly reason and tried to export out of Ohio. And, and, you, and you took it and instead you saddled it on the rest of, of the American community at large. And so as a result, we're going to thrash your soccer team all over the field. That's, that's essentially what happened in a nutshell tonight. So uh, I, would like, uh, I would like to say that, that I would, as I said on Twitter and have said repeatedly, I, I think that you know, the, the players, John, the players are, uh, they, they seem to be on social media, some of them. Okay. Uh, Various ones, uh, you know, Instagram. I've heard of uh, that. Twitter. Heard of that too. Um, you know, John, they don't have MySpace anymore. No, no. they're not on CompuServe or uh, uh, no, Mind, not the, MindSpring. No, they're not on the AOL live chat anymore. Okay, um, but but they're on they're on several various different uh, different forms of social media, and, and and some of these players have been called. Um, They've they've been called uh, some 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 names here, John. They, they've 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 had their skills brought into question, uh, and and you know it seems like a lot of these players have been on the uh, they've been on the up recently. And I, I would like to say yet again that it is a it's a statement that struggle is not a permanent state. Give people room to be less than great for a while, because when it pays off and it comes good the benefits will be pointed in your direction so it seems like there's been patience that has paid off um it is you know when i look at, at franco and i i look at barco um Josetu, i'm i'm seeing some guys that have have really dialed it up and they've been playing really well and so it's it's uh, we fall into a trap where we're like oh well we plugged player X into their ideal spot based on these metrics but it, it's not it's more than a spreadsheet it's more than football manager it's more than FIFA it, it, they're they're human beings and they have to you know if, if everything's not a lot can't perform at their uh, their optimal optimal levels and so i would just like to say that you know uh, give people some room it's gonna work you know and, and yeah for the people who have have started putting on the twitters uh you know what in god's name was gabriel heinz doing uh during this time frame I, your guess is as good as mine <laughs> but I will say that the the team really seems to be doing quite well. They all seem to be happy and really enjoying each other's company and enjoy playing, uh, you know, in the field with each other, which, uh, you know, this has been brought into debate in previous times. But everything seems to be humming along, John. I I, I don't know what people if, if you're not happy with this, if you're if you're not happy with the past two games, uh, you know, I can give you the name of my therapist. All right. I'll give you the name of my therapist uh, for each person that gets referred. I think I get like five or ten bucks uh, maybe discounted off my my care. Yeah. So, you know, hey, look, you know, if you're not happy still about the state of Atlanta United soccer, 
or you're still saying fire Carlos and fire all these other people and fire whoever and boot whoever and sell whoever. Uh, come to me. I'll give you my therapist's name. It's all going to be fine. Like, enjoy the success while it's here. All right, let's take a look at the numbers, courtesy of our friends at SofaScore, as we always right. do here on Salty Takeaways. Okay. Starting at the back, Brad Guzan wore the captain's armband. I don't anticipate he was challenged a whole lot this evening. Punched no. a 7.4. Uh, your back line, as it's listed, is a 5-3-2-3-5-2. Two, two, take your pick. Jake Mulraney into the starting lineup at a 6.8. Miles a 7.1. Alan Franco at an 8.3 at the back tonight with his two assists. George Campbell starts, gets a 7.3. Brooks Lennon a 7.4. Luis Arujo with his goal in the fifth minute that started Monster. things. 8.5 tonight, courtesy yeah. of our friends at SofaScore. Hasechu a 6.7. Marcelina Moreno a 7.1. Joseph with two goals, a an 8.4. Ezekiel Barco with his goal, an 8.7. Your subs, George Bello, a 6.5, putting in 25 minutes worth of work. Mo Adams got some work. Uh, with another 25 minutes for Hosechu, punched a 6.3. Jurgen Dom had 15 minutes with a 6.8. Tyler Wolf, 15 minutes in for Joseph with a 6.7. Mm-hmm. Kubo Torres came in for Luis Arujo and had a 6.5. Your stats on the evening 61 39 overall in possession for Atlanta United. 15 total shots to 11, 9 on target for Atlanta United. Also on the board, it was uh, 18 fouls for Cincinnati tonight. 15 for Atlanta United, five yellow cards for FC Cincinnati on the evening. Uh, Big chances, woodwork, counterattacks, shots and goals, shots inside and outside the box, obviously, on Atlanta United's favor. 89% accuracy on your passing, 509 of 575, 30 of 40 on long balls tonight at 75%, uh, 22 of 35 for FC Cincinnati, passing at 86% efficiency. Uh, dribbling 17 of 23 for dribbles for Atlanta United, uh, six of 19 FC Cincinnati on the dribble at 32%. Mm. Uh, duels, it was 60-40, it was 61-40, so it's basically 60 point whatever percent in your duels won. Atlanta mm-hmm. won 10 of 13 aerial duels, uh, tackles 17-16 and 11-5 on interceptions for FC Cincinnati, 14 clearances for Atlanta United on the match. Standings after the evening is over in the East, as we're discussing it, Atlanta United now seventh at 33 points, 24 matches played behind Montreal at 34 points and plus four in goal difference. DC United at 34 points and plus six. NYCFC at 35 points. Orlando City with two red cards and a 4-2 loss tonight to CF Montreal. They uh, are now at 38 points. Nashville is at 41. So really, if you're looking at it, Nick, you're five points out of third, eight points out of second, and you still have uh, a third of the schedule to go, basically. Yeah. Uh, I I, 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 sense you're not going to be disagreeing with me on a whole lot of this stuff tonight. uh, Yeah. Look, I I, I get that we're supposed to be doing some kind of like – you know, hot take express where I fire off some stuff that makes no kind of sense. And, you know, like, uh, like <laughs> somehow that, uh, there's gerbils on the moon or, you know, that, uh, somehow, uh, you know, if you put enough liquid plumber into, uh, into a small automobile, it can drive you to Milwaukee. I don't, I, I know we're supposed to have some, something in here, but yeah, it's a good team. <laughs> We've been trying to tell people that this is a good team for a while. <laughs> I don't know. We, we've been getting called names. We've had our, our reputations uh, sort of um, we, questioned. We've been, they've been sullied is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, our reputations have been sullied. Uh, we have been called uh, purveyors of sunshine. And, uh, and pumpers of sunshine, too. And, and pumpers of sunshine, yes, yes. The blue-collar variant of the purveyors of sunshine. We are the, we, the pumpers of sunshine. Uh, the sunshine refinery, uh, perhaps. Uh, but... It's a good team. <laughs> like it, it, Joseph needed to come back physically and mentally from his knee injury. He yeah. has. Uh, you need you you needed more dynamic attacking talent on the field. You got it. 
Araujo, uh, you could thank Carlos for uh, for calling in the the new Brazilian warlord who is uh, running loose in the attacking third. Thank you, Carlos, uh, for making that happen. Uh, we needed to present more defensive options. George Campbell has been a revelation. Not to you guys. I haven't been going to a lot of twos games. I need to obviously up that that number, but. I have listened as you, John, and Jason, and Jarrett have been yelling and screaming about this George Campbell kid for a long time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. And who's out there in the transfer market? And you guys have been like, shut up, Nick. We don't <laughs> need another defender from the transfer market. We have George Campbell coming down the pipe. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, great thing. Yeah. And sure enough... Here comes George Campbell, and this kid is a monster. He's doing big things. Uh, we were told, hey, look, Hosetu's going to come true. Just be patient, be patient, be patient. Hosetu's come true. Uh, we have been told that Barco, when he gets physically healthy, gets his confidence going, that the, the kid that we saw from Independiente is going to be, who fired them, the Copa Sudamericana, is going to be running wild the olympics happened and my timeline was blown up with people who said oh we're never gonna sell barco now wow we can just take the loss and get it over with and and look fan is short for fanatic i mm -hmm. get it yes but aren't you glad you didn't sell barco during that summer window for for peanuts and if you and if you if you were saying that i'm not calling your name i'm not subtweeting you i'm saying just in the future, a player struggling, take a breath, take a minute, let the player work through it. Marco's case took a little bit of time. The kid's getting hacked like machete hacked every time he goes across the field with the ball. But we are seeing a Barco that is dialed in. We're seeing a Barco that is healthy. And we are seeing a Barco who understands the assignment in the system and the payoff is there. Um, we are seeing players who are really good, who are discovering themselves, getting comfortable, showcasing those skills. And I'm letting everyone know now, maybe not the end of this season, but almost certainly next season, we will be in the same boat as we were at the end of 2019 when we had to start looking at a bunch of player contracts and going eh, well what are we going to do here because there's a lot of people now who are playing above their contract level it's a good thing for now this team is racing up the standings like a saturn 5 rocket shout out to spacex tonight for a successful launch putting tourists into space well done uh but this thing is this thing's humming on all cylinders and while i was not in the stadium i, I watched uh thanks to uh thanks to someone who loaned their login to me for the valleys <laughs> thing uh, uh yeah so i was able to watch and see that the fans who were there were rowdy and they were going nuts and even though there was a smaller crowd midweek game raining covid everything else you guys were very loud. I'm just letting you know. Uh, the speakers uh, were not even up to the max. And people in my house were like, hey, uh, that, 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 that thing's kind of loud. Can you turn it down some? You guys understood the assignment. You came through. There's a lot to be happy with right now. And I know we are used to a couple of years of major suck, not just from an athletic standpoint, but from a general life standpoint. This is your official permission slip to enjoy something and just kind of enjoy it without reservation. And if somebody says, wait a minute, hey, you, you're not allowed to enjoy something. Let me tell you why it sucks. You just tune them into the show and understand said person who is telling my friend that is trying to enjoy something without reservation that I have a finger for them and they can select which one best represents the feelings that I'm trying to convey in that moment. So it's okay to enjoy this. It's okay to have a good time. 
I'm not worried about what happens when Sosa comes back. I'm not worried about the man management side. I think uh, Pineda has a pretty good understanding of this team from a man management standpoint. We're going to start cycling players. It's going to be okay. But the problems that we have right now, good problems. Which player goes in? Which player comes out? The rotation. Oh, my God, we have too many people who are qualified to be on the field right now. Good problem. Um, We have players who are now performing above their contract level. Oh, my God, can we keep them? Good problem. Oh, man, people are going to start calling for Miles Robinson, and they're going to start calling for Barco, and they're going to start calling for George Campbell, and they're going to start calling for Bellow, and oh, great problem. This is what happens. And, and when Champions League is back, look at Ajax. This is their business model. Oh, is Ajax going to keep the team together? Hell no, they're not going to keep the team together. They're going to sell all these cats and make a ton of cash. Uh, you know, it's it's... It's the model. So it works. And this is, this is a great problem to have. Unless you just bought somebody's jersey and then they leave and then you're like, oh my God. Then keep it as a, like a souvenir on the wall. And be like, I remember the good times with this player. John, I don't know. I'm supposed to be mad about something, I guess. Not I, necessarily. I, I no, no, no. It's supposed to be salty. I don't no, know no, what I'm no, salty. No, no, we have salty. salty. Like I said, we have salty and sweet. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to wrap up the show with what folks are saying on the Twitters. And we'll play okay, it. Let's go. We'll play it as cliffhanger style, as we always do here from The Price is Right. And we'll just right. continue. I will continue to read topics. Is and this then the with, yodeling game on Price yeah, this, is Right? Yeah, this is the, the one. Yodeler, yodeling? Yeah, this is the yodeler okay. where okay. as the cliffhanger is going up and up and up and up and up as he gets closest mm-hmm. to being in, within the range of the price. Mm-hmm. And when he hits the range, everything stops. Mm-hmm. So when Nick... It might, this might be pressure luck, really, where it's John okay. reads the tweets from the timeline, and then Nick will say stop, mm-hmm. and then Nick will address said tweet. No way, me, no way, me, no way, me, no way, me, stop. Right. So this is uh, this is uh, salty takeaways pressure luck. Okay, let's go. Tom, Thomas Jewin wants to know how salty is Jeff Cameron's hair? Um, he has some pretty high grade product in that that mess. I mean, I, I don't know what product specific i haven't you know here's the thing is it's going to come as a major shock to people uh, i have not had to use uh, any sort of hair product in a long period of time um so i don't know but i would assume that uh, mr cameron is using some kind of um some kind of hair paste perhaps okay. i don't know horse paste who knows i don't know i don't know these things uh j jason joiner says this is the atlanta united play we wanted mm-hmm. michael Bucklew. How old is Barco? Like 20, 21? He's still younger than Miles was when he when he arrived. Some fans need right. to chill instead of thinking acting demanding makes you a better fan. And Michael, to answer your question, Ezekiel Barco turned 22 mm. back in late March. And, and uh, Mr. Bucklew and I may uh, disagree on uh, Zack Snyder's view of the DC universe. And we may disagree on um, certain aspects of, uh, of of the Justice League movie, but we are in absolute agreement on this particular matter. Also on the board, it is Turner Kirby, who along your lines in the show so far, Turner says there needs to be an apology line forming somewhere for several players on this team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they have various uh, social media channels that you at your leisure can... Uh, can go through and, and type a little message to DM. And look, I had to do it for Trey Young. When, when Trey Young got drafted, I was, oh my God, I was so mad. I'm like this, what a, what a waste of a pick. We got, we got the dollar general, Steph Curry. Uh, this is what, this, what a waste of a pick. I can't believe this. And I, and within like three months, I was messaging him <laughs> on social media, like, bro, I am so sorry. I was completely wrong. It is okay to do that. It's okay to apologize. It's the thing that our parents have been trying to teach us uh, since we were like, like, a, like two years old. Like, go oh, apologize to your friend. You didn't mean what you said. It, it's, it's the same thing. This is your cue. It's okay. You didn't mean what you said. Go tell Barco that it's okay that he's a good player. There you go. Also on the board, Katie Weaver. Sweet. The last two games goal differential. Franco as an assist man and Aruju's dribbling. Salty. Mm-hmm. Wolf's tackle on Acosta just because Dom is a baby deer in a convenience store. Cute, energetic, little control of limbs, bless his heart. <laughs> All right. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. Steve Tanner. I would say that Swagger started that the Swixter was talking about back with Valentino, but Pineda has gotten them to play faster and more vertical. I would say, I would say things have been simplified, and I have to be very careful when I say simplified because that means that it's um, it, it it's, can somehow be misconstrued as less than intelligent kind of like using the word pragmatic right right and so you'll you'll have someone who say oh well the tactics are simple well like well anybody can do it anyone can coach it no not really um there is there's i think one of the highest forms of uh intelligence is simplicity and you know if when you learn how most italian meals are made you learn that it's actually really simple um but use hyper fresh ingredients well sometimes in soccer you can have you know more simple tactics but with a radically fresh take on them and implementing that simplifying some things you allow the artistry to take over uh just like if you use hyper fresh ingredients when you cook you allow the flavors of hyper fresh herbs to add fragrance and a particular flavor and it changes the complexity of the dish in the same way if i take a player like um if if i take a player like moreno and say okay i'm not trying to restrict you to these 15 different things that you were the previous regime wanted you to do if this then this if this then this if this then this but however uh when the planetary alignment uh is at 43 degrees and the humidity is at 72 percent you have to do this instead no 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 I want you to do this and this and this. And then when you get the ball, be creative and express yourself. Now, that sounds very simple, but if the player understands the assignment and their role within that system to a T, it allows them to be more comfortable and allow them to do things that exhibit uh, that, 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 that flair, that, that, that bit of spiciness, that, that, that bit of the millimeter pass that they were missing before now goes through crystal clear. And we were all marveling at the replay. Like, my God, how did he find that pass? Because his eyes were open. He wasn't worried about 15 different damn things. Instead, he just said, oh, bop, 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 bop. I make this guy look like an idiot. I make this guy, I think, uh, rethink his entire <laughs> career. I put the ball between this guy's legs. Now his wife is leaving him. And instead, up oh, the ball's up at Joseph. It's in the back of the net. It's allow artistry to flourish. And it to me, I think that's what's happening here. And you're right. It did start under Rob Valentino because Rob Valentino was the first person to simplify things after Gabriel Heinze. And you started to see the team really thriving on artistry, simple tactics, artistry. You have to have artists who are capable of doing it, right? Yeah. Uh, and what you have now under Pineda is somebody who is a bit more tactically refined. However, he's the tactics are still simple enough to allow artistry to take place. And I think that's the differentiator. That's the, that's the key word in corporate America now is differentiator. Differentiator. Right? That, what, uh, the, so what is the differentiator on your particular product or service? Well, okay, in this case, it's a more simplified approach that allows our best-in-class X to flourish best in class analysts in the uh, sport in the uh, the business world in this case best in class players we have more talent on this field than most teams in this league and is an embarrassment of riches and I think you're starting to see that flourish also on the board Ricky Ricardo says Joseph has scored against Orlando 10 times he's their father Hmm. But we need to talk about Orlando's little brother, Cincy, because he scored five times against Cincinnati. Cincinnati's a bad team, man. I, look, I love Yap Stom. Yap Stom was an AC Milan player. Um, and if you're a Man U fan, you should, you should, you should like him as well, I think. But <laughs> he... 
I, I don't know. I, 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 Tata Martino could be in charge of that team. I think they'd still be bad. They, there's just, they are bereft of talent. And th- th- that front office, that they, that the, the numerous changes that they have had in that front office, they can't figure out what the hell they want to be. Because they keep trying to go with this, this more Dutch model, uh, Dutch light model to um, not even like it, we're just going to call it Dutch and it's going to be something else entirely to what Yapstam is doing now, which seems to be like triage with a Dutch accent, I guess. I don't know. But there's nothing really going on with this team. And to go from to watch what they were in USL, which was this this powerhouse raucous crowds, and to come to MLS and to have this take place, yeah, I, I hate it for their fans. I really do. There's no shade or snark at all in anything I'm about to say. That fan base, when you saw what they were with USL. It was amazing. And mm-hmm. if you saw any of those games, you were like, my God, I want that in MLS. As a fan, I want that experience in MLS. I want it to come up I, and, and insert plug and play. The problem is the ownership group that made that happen hired a couple of people who had no business working in MLS. They had one guy who was exceptionally, ridiculously loose with his words, exceptionally buffoonish in the way he acted, and he was gone. And then they had another guy who was buffoonish, and he was gone. And then they recognized that the whole mess was a disaster, and the per- that somebody else in the front office was gone. They were they need stability, and they need. A talent influx immediately. This franchise is going to have to spend some money. They're going to have to spend some money. And if they don't want to, then the fans have every right not to show up to games. They have every right not. I mean, and look, in COVID world, you have a right to, not to show up to a game any damn way. But I'm what I'm saying is, you have a right not to buy the latest and greatest jersey. You have the right not to engage um, with their social media team. Do do not nuke their social media team because it's some poor intern who is just trying to do a job. But you have the right to be mad. If you're spending money on your season tickets and that's the product that you're getting saddled with day in and day out, you've got a right to be mad. And I think Cincy deserves better because we saw what they were in USL. We saw what that crowd can be. That's the kind of crowd that MLS wanted and needed. Everything looked like it was going to be awesome, and then it just kind of all went to hell in the handbasket. So, two more before we send things away. And reminder to everyone that will obviously be discussing things on an overreaction Thursday in mm-hmm. the morning because we'll be talking about Atlanta United and Atlanta United two. Uh, with their draw with Charleston, anything else on your mind that happened from Champions League? So there's a lot of stuff to get into if you're going to tune in for Overreaction Thursday starting at 9 o'clock, 9 to 11 tomorrow mm-hmm. uh, on the SDH network. Old Jack the Nick at Nickajack88 on Twitter says, Joseph's second goal was disrespectful. He's not going to apologize. Cincinnati knows what it did. Yeah. They know what they did. We don't have to talk about what they did. They did. Yeah. And the last one on the board comes from Griffin Westbrook. Has a salty. He says the performances Don has been putting in has just have just not been enough for how much he's getting paid. Sell his suite is. Uh, wonder what happened to all those people hating on Ellen Franco. Amazing play by him tonight. Mm-hmm. Look, if if you have, and I'll get to Jurgen Dom in a moment, but for Franco, some of the. Like the, the, the Serie A that I grew up with, the counters all started from the back line with a player who could put the ball way downfield with precision and exceptional timing. And what you saw tonight was a player who could distribute the ball whatever length of the field you wanted to go 
with precision timing. And that happens when a player is comfortable, when they know their role within a system, when they feel confident in their abilities. Because to shoot a ball across lines like that, to put a ball across lines, to place it downfield, you have to know what your teammate's going to do, one. And two, you have to have confidence to say, hey, I'm skipping the midfield, and I'm, I'm putting this up to where I need to put it on my own. As much as I give... Um, Leonardo Bonucci, a ton of grief. That is one of his like amazing skills is that he has the ability to distribute the ball out of the back with insane accuracy. And it keeps Juve in games. And it helped keep Juve uh, alive in a lot of games that they should not have been alive in because they were able to execute a blistering counter because the ball came from the back while the team was still, the other team was still in transition, and you're able to put the ball into a dangerous area where you had now a numerical advantage. That's what you had with Franco tonight. So well done with that. Now, now my issue with Dom is, yes, he has ability. I have not seen Jurgen Dom play at his contract level. I haven't seen I'm, him. I've rarely seen him at 100% healthy, too. No, that and that's that's again, that's that is 100% correct, John. We have not seen him 100% healthy, but we have also not as a result of that have not seen him perform to contract level. Now, what did I start this show off saying? Got to be patient. Right? Mhm. We are not going to get the medical report in detail about Jurgen Dom. We didn't. We did not pay a transfer fee for him, if nope. I remember correctly. Came nope. in on a free. Came in on a free. There's time to see what he can do when healthy. So if if he had like a like a five million dollar transfer fee associated with him, I might be a little more like. Ugh. But then again, you're still, I mean, you're tied paying the money either way. But I want to see him healthy and see what he can do. If he can't get healthy and he can't stay healthy, then it's a Ferrari with that's on blocks. It's great that you have a Ferrari sitting on blocks. Not good. So I want to see him get healthy. I want to see what he can do. I'm hoping that we can see that in the playoffs. If I am Atlanta United, I'm shelving him for a, for a couple of weeks just to see what we if if we can get if we can get something out of him late in season going into the playoffs because especially with the style that Gonzalo Pineda is going to be playing when Atlanta counters, if you have someone like Dom in there, who can just hit hyperdrive and explode forward, that is an asset you want. But if you look around that that front, <laughs> there's not a lot of room <laughs> right now for him either. Yeah. So, again, it's a good problem to have. But Jurgen has to get healthy. He has to get healthy. He has to stay healthy. And when he's healthy... We need to see if he can get his rhythm back. I haven't seen it yet, but I hope we can. 4 0 win for Atlanta United over FC Cincinnati. And Atlanta United going in, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal, is a minus 244 in the juice boxes. Your draw was a plus 400. FC Cincinnati, a plus 615. Setting up the match with DC United on the weekend right now, Atlanta United, even money. Your draw is a plus 257. DC United is a plus 266. Once again, giving you the standings in the East. Atlanta United in the playoffs. As of right now, 24 matches played, 33 points. Winners of four of their last five. Five points from third with Orlando City, who has lost two in a row. Inter Miami and Philadelphia now out of the playoff picture at 23 matches played in 32 points. Columbus is 10th at 30 points. So basically, four through 10 separated by five points, three through 10 separated by 
eight as we get ready for. Can I commit a cardinal sin and interrupt you for a moment? That's not a cardinal as, sin. As, as you're as you're closing out, because you do great, you do a great close, and I hate interrupting the great close. <laughs> so, what else is on your mind, sir? Now, I just gotta say, because you bring up a point when you talk about this, when, when you're going through the uh, when you're going through the east. I know things haven't been great for the past couple of years. Can you imagine being Miami? Like, it's one thing to be Cincinnati, where you know, like, okay, our team is not going to spend any money. To be good, or Minnesota, we're going to build slowly. I.e., we're going to play. Not, eh, we're going to go up, and then we're going to collapse. We're going to go with the Scandinavian variant, right? Uh, and then we're going to. And then you could be Orlando, right? Which looked like they had. Oh my God, this is finally it! And then the wheels start falling off. Wheels on the bus fall off and off. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine being Miami, which is the team that was supposed to be the new version of Atlanta? Here in the East, like we have that in Los Angeles, right? Like we're going to spin big and we're going to go big and everything big. And then, eh, and then questionable results. Mm-hmm. Miami, you you feel the, like five designated players. Mm-hmm. And you're True. out of the playoff picture? Are you serious? Well, uh, I mean, uh, from, their, from their start. The hottest teams, and this is from a, a, a at Mike Conti 929. After their start, uh, what Miami, Inter Miami has done since August 1st. Mm-hmm. Hottest teams in Major League Soccer since August 1, points per match. Mm-hmm. Here's your top seven Portland, sure. at, Portland at 1.8, mm-hmm. Vancouver and Nashville tied at fifth at 1.9, mm-hmm. Colorado at 2.2. Mm-hmm. Inter Miami is third, third hottest since August 1st with a 2.3. Tied for first, mm-hmm. New England at 2.4 with Atlanta United. So after that disastrous start mm-hmm. with uh, Inter Miami trying to figure out who they were and the five DPs and finally realizing that Blaze Matweedy was not the individual that you should have brought in for the salary that you brought him in as one of your five DPs. Amazing. And you've been sitting on and Blaze Matweedy has been uh, getting frequent sitter miles for mm-hmm. Inter Miami over the last, say, six weeks or so. Right now, it looks like uh, Neville has righted the ship to a certain degree. He's come mm-hmm. up with a, a lineup that he's happy with. And, you know, he's getting the best out of he can with this club. Because remember, the next two years, they're going to be hamstrung when it comes to your uh, Garber Bucks and trying to construct a team. So it's going to be a difficult slog for them. But it looks like uh, uh, Neville has figured it out when it comes to how things are supposed to be as they're climbing the table from being absolute uh, horrible early on. Yeah, good luck to him. But that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. My God, like even like through twenty, like with twenty twenty, you know, from MLS is back, which I don't really wish on any team, but that's what we had to deal with mm-hmm. through uh, Watergate. <laughs> stupid Watergate. Yeah, stupid Watergate, uh, and then you know other buffoonery I, I, I if if it leads us to the right place great but at least we're not a team that had five dps and is now having to do like like essentially turn the battleship around in the back end of a pool mm-hmm. so i'm feeling all right with things okay please continue closing thanks austin, austin powers trying to turn the uh Oh, yes, the, 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 the dog yeah. in the hallway, uh-huh. <laughs> bumping it back and forth. Yeah, yes. Try, trying to do a Y turn with a uh, a flatbed in a very small hallway. So that's that's kind of what we're staring at. So uh, once again, once, uh, overreaction Thursday, unless you watch, unless you listen to this after overreaction Thursday, where you'll get a separate program of everything that has gone on through our brains when it comes to this. Two's review, overreaction Thursday, starting at nine here on the SDH Network. Nick, send us home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate everyone who does. Thank you. So even if you disagree, I want to make that abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. Even if you disagree, Mm -hmm. thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for responding to us on, uh, on the socials. And we look forward to interacting with you all on a regular basis because you are our friends and we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, mucha, mucha, 
Plata, Euro, all the goodness. Be kind to yourselves. Mucha Plata, y'all. Thank you.